In this video, we begin to look at types of reactions that conjugated dienes undergo, beginning with addition reactions. Addition reactions are also undertaken by alkenes, and the types of compounds that will add across conjugated diene double bonds are analogous to those that will add across standard alkene double bonds. So when we think about addition reactions in general, when we were thinking of this in terms of the standard alkene, a couple of different types of alkene addition reactions we did that involved carbocations were we could do hydration, which is adding water across the carbon-carbon double bond by using an acid catalyst and water. We would also do the addition of halo acids across carbon-carbon double bonds by adding HX to the reaction mixture. And likewise here, for our conjugated dienes, we are going to focus on those two types of addition reactions as well, that is hydration and the addition of halo acids. Looking at initially the mechanism for the addition of halo acids as our example, but the principles we're going to look at here for conjugated dienes and the ways that the reactions of conjugated dienes and addition differ and are similar to the reactions of alkenes, we'll focus on the mechanism for the addition of HX, but you should also be able to adapt to running hydration reactions instead using the principles that we are talking about here. So let's go ahead and work through an example of illustrating how we can add an electrophile across carbon-carbon double bond of conjugated dienes. We're going to start with this structure, 2E4E e hexa 24 diene, and we'll react with one equivalent of HBr in our example problem. So what will happen here in this symmetrical conjugated diene is that we will follow a mechanism that initially looks a lot like the addition reactions of alkenes in that the first step of the mechanism, as is the first step in general when we react with any acid, is going to be protonation. In this protonation reaction, what we will do is take our pi bond from one of the two alkene groups. It is going to be used as a base to grab a proton from the acid HBr. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring your pi bond over, attacking that proton, breaking the hydrogen bromine bond to give bromide anion, Br minus, as well as our carbocation intermediate. And now here, in thinking of where to place the proton, we have two choices. We could either place the proton here at position number four of the chain, or over here at position five of the chain. So our two options are place the proton here on our product side, carbocation goes over here, or place the proton here at carbon number five, and then the carbocation would be at position four instead. What we will always want to do here is create a scenario where the carbocation is allylic, meaning it is separated by a single bond from the alkene group. And so the correct place to position the new hydrogen, which I'll show explicitly here, is right there at position five in red, so that you create an allylic carbocation. So a pointer here, when you decide how to protonate, is that rather than just blindly following Mark's rule, Markovnikov's rule that we talked about in Org 1 about making the most alkyl substituted carbocation is here, the most stable and therefore most favorable carbocation is going to be an allylic carbocation. So we want to make an allylic carbocation here. And so therefore, in determining which of the two carbon atoms to add the proton to, you add the proton to this carbon atom on the right, put the positive charge over here, because that is going to result in an allylic carbocation. Now, the reason why the allylic carbocation is favorable is due to resonance. 
that in fact, rather than this being the actual electron configuration of this intermediate, the actual electron configuration is a hybrid of the two resonance structures that we can draw for this. Anytime you have an allylic carbocation, there will always be multiple resonance structures. So to show the second resonance structure, what we can illustrate is that the pi electrons aren't stuck in that illustrated location. Instead, they also can be over here as well. So the red electron pushing arrow shows what we are trying to do here. We're moving the pi bond over toward the carbocation, and that's going to result in that carbocation being delocalized over multiple carbon atoms. Because once we move the double bond over to here, as shown with my red pi bond, that is going to then place the positive formal charge over here on carbon number two of the system. And so now what we're showing is that our positive charge is shared over the two allylic positions. Here is our allylic position in this resonance structure. Here is the allylic position in the other resonance structure. So we have these two distinct resonance structures here that will act to stabilize that carbocation intermediate. Resonance is a stronger stabilizing force than is induction. And that's why we favor making this allylic carbocation. The allylic carbocation will enable resonance, whereas creating any other type of carbocation is going to rely exclusively on induction to stabilize the molecule. And resonance is a stronger stabilizing factor than induction. So making the allylic carbocation is always gonna be the favorable route to go with this. Now that does create a bit of a tricky scenario here because now that we have done this, we have two intermediates that we need to work with going into the next step because we've created these two resonance stabilized structures. So drawing out our two allylic carbocations, because both of those will in fact play roles in the next step of the reaction. We have our carbocation at position two, which I just drew. And then we also have a second resonance structure where our carbocation is at position three of our six carbon chain. In both cases, those carbocations are allylic. They will remain allylic no matter what you do with resonance. If you've done resonance correctly, you should always still have the carbocation at the allylic position. So that's always a good thing to check for. So now that we have uh, written these out, what we have here are electrophilic carbons. Carbocations are very electrophilic. We have those in a mixture with a nucleophile, the bromide. And so what's going to happen is that the bromide nucleophile is going to attack the electrophilic carbocation here. So we'll go ahead and show that happening for each of the two resonance structures because these are the two different routes that the reaction can go is that either of these two resonance structures are going to be favorable in the reaction. So the bromine will come in, attack here, or bromide comes in and attacks here as well. So we can go ahead and write out the products of those steps. So we're going to plug in our bromine here, drawing in the rest of the atoms of the chain, and so on. Draw in the bromine here as well. You'll notice by no coincidence that the bromine ends up at the allylic position in each of the two cases to give us are two major organic products of this reaction. Now, in these two products of the reaction, we can use some terminology to describe the two products that we have shown. The terminology that we can use to describe this is we can describe it as a 1,4 addition product or a 1,2 addition product. The way that we determine that using the terminology 1,4 versus 1,2 addition, is that 1,2 addition, as a general definition, refers to the two groups that have been added are added to adjacent carbons. And so if you have a carbon here, carbon here, the rest of the chain, I'm just going to put as a squiggly line there, if we've added H and X, what a 1,2 addition means is that the hydrogen is added to one carbon, 
the halogen has added to the other carbon. For that as a one, two addition. So you could think of those two groups as being visceral to one another. The hydrogen that you've just brought in and added and the halogen are on adjacent carbon atoms. We refer to that always as a one, two addition. So when we use the term one, two addition, that doesn't mean that we are adding groups at carbon number one and carbon number two of the IUPAC named chain. Instead, it just means that we are adding the groups to adjacent carbon atoms. The other term that we use to describe the reactions in terms of where the groups have ended up is a 1,4 addition. And what that means when we say 1,4 addition is that we are adding the groups to position number one and position number four relative to one another. So carbon number one will be the first carbon. Carbon number four over here, we'll go ahead and put X for a halogen. This would be an example of a one four addition reaction is where relatively speaking, relative to one another, the new groups that came in added at position one, skipped a couple carbons and then at this fourth position. And so what you will notice is whenever you are doing these reactions where you're adding to a conjugated diene and creating these resonance stabilized allylic carbocations, one of the products will be classified as a 1-2 addition product and the other as a 1-4 addition product. And we can sort out which is which by looking back through the mechanism for this reaction. So in the case of the allylic radical that we put on the bottom here that I'm circling with my laser pointer, in that particular radical, we placed our proton that we just added right here. So if I go through and sketch that out in the next step, at the next step, this is where the hydrogen was, right here. That corresponds to the same allylic carbocation that we drew up here. And following that through, the hydrogen is, that we've added is still right there at the end. And so therefore, we would describe this as a 1-2 addition because the bromine and the hydrogen are adding to adjacent carbon atoms right here. And so that is our one, two addition product. And that's a common term that is used to describe these reactions is you might be asked to predict the one, two addition product of a particular reaction. And we would describe that one, two addition product as the product right here. The other reaction product we can classify as a one, two or one, four addition product by going through the same process. So we go back to the beginning and we look at where has that proton added in the first step of the mechanism. In the first step of the mechanism, the proton had added right here. And so we can sketch that out going through. So it goes right here. And then relative to that proton that we've added in red here, where does the bromine go? So the proton we've added is right here. And I'm highlighting this with my green there. And then the bromine is over here. And we would describe this as a 1,4 addition product because the proton is at the first carbon, two, three, four is where you see the bromine. So the two groups that we have added are at position one and position four relative to one another. Not at the very ends of the chain, of a four carbon chain, but they are at position one relative to position number four in that addition product. So we describe that as the one four addition product. So in other words, this reaction is creating two different constitutional isomers. One of those we describe as the one four addition product. The other is the one two addition product. And that is always going to be the case for these reactions where you're adding electrophiles to conjugated dienes is that you will create the one four addition product and the one, two addition product. Now, there's one additional point that we need to bring up here in discussing these one, two and one, four addition products. And that is the topic of the reaction stereoselectivity. In this reaction, we have a nucleophile attacking a carbocation. Carbocations are trigonal planar in structure. And so there's no preference for whether the bromine comes in and bonds from the top face of the molecule versus the bottom face. As a result, the reaction is not stereoselective from the perspective of looking at the RS stereocenters. And so in our final product here that I'll zoom into just a little bit here, 
the carbon atom that has the new bond to bromine is going to be a mixture of the R plus the S configurations there. Same thing for our other constitutional isomer product on bottom there that you would have both of the stereoisomers appear with an R and an S configuration going to that bromine atom because of the fact that the nucleophilic bromine attacked a trigonal planar flat carbocation. And so you have the two different possibilities for stereochemistry there. As well, we have an alkene group. And due to the fact that there is that resonance going on in the electron delocalization, the trans configuration that we originally saw for the alkene groups is not going to remain in place. Instead, due to the fact that we have that resonance going on and the electrons aren't localized strictly in this position, they aren't locked into place, and said so they're hybridized across multiple positions of the molecule through resonance, these carbon-carbon double bonds are not stuck and locked as the original E configuration, but instead, in the final product, they'll be a mixture of E plus Z. Same thing up here. This alkene group would be a mixture of E plus Z. So, in fact, you would actually end up with a large mixture of different reaction products here because for the structure on bottom, since there are two stereocenters that have variable stereochemistry using the two to the n rule, n is equal to two because there's two stereocenters that are variable here. So two to the n means four, which means you could draw for this structure all four stereoisomers. Likewise, for the structure up top here, you could draw four stereoisomers of that as well. So there's in actuality eight different stereoisomers that one could draw for the products of this reaction. And in fact, all eight of those different stereoise, all eight of those different regioisomer and stereoisomer products would form in this reaction.